As usual, uh, if you participate in these in the past, this is going to be just a brief update on a few topics and then some Q&A and discussion time. Um, certainly uh, look forward to that. <clears throat> I am uh, Bob Nosworthy, and I'll also be uh, joined, I think, uh, with uh, Jason Sisk uh, on our single pair Ethernet physical air side. And uh, if you have <laughs> questions, uh, feel free to um, type them in and we can address them as we go or at the end. Um, I'm definitely looking for this, as always, to be an interactive uh, opportunity here. So um, given that we got a little bit of a late start, I think I'll just jump in and uh, hopefully we'll have a few other folks join in as we proceed. But um, as always, I appreciate your time. A brief overview of the lab. As always, our organization has been working with TSN and single pair ethernet and all the way back to 10 days T and FDDI since 88. Um, so quite active with Open Alliance uh, and, and other activities in, in this space, just recently back from the IEEE um, plenary up in Montreal. Uh, so Jason and I will uh, give you a, a brief overview of, of some of our um, encounters in Montreal and any other takeaways. And we have a few other bits of news around plugfests that I want to make sure uh, we talk about and some ongoing research activities. So again, we're just going to quickly go through those Montreal updates from the 802 plenary, a uh, little bit on our T1S and T1L activities, including some plug fests around that, around PTP, around high-speed networking, um, and uh, touch on a few other notes in the industry that may be of interest to the parties here. Um, again, we're thankful that we could get some of our staff and students, since Montreal is just a five-hour drive up the road, we were able to take quite a few folks so they could experience their first IEEE meeting, get, uh, in some cases, actual international travel under their belts. You have to remember, some of our students are only with us for four years, so two years of a pandemic, that's half their uh, academic career in college, at least. So it's, it's nice to finally get some of those students engaged. Um, Really quickly, um, can't obviously cover all the meetings and all the topics uh, in a brief update, but some highlights that um, stuck out for me and, and might be of interest to you, therefore. Uh, the DG Automotive TSN profile continues to move forward. There was some interesting discussion on, you know, what's the right profile? It's not so much that people can't, of course, do PTP. We can figure out how to do PTP. It's how do we fit it in a standards context where we aren't breaking any rules of the standard. And it turns out there's a small annoyance with GPTP as it's written right now, um, where even if BMCA is turned off as the new 2020 standard allows for 802.1AS GPTP, you're still required to send an announce message. And while there are some things like the Avenue Automotive profile that says turn off BMCA and don't send announce messages, in an IEEE standards, we have to be self-consistent and conformant to all the different requirements. So unless the GPTP standard can get changed quickly, which is an effort that is, is being pursued, um, devices would still have to send an announce message even if they're not doing BMCA. So some discussion of, well, gee, is that the right profile for us to use, or should we perhaps look at a 1588 profile, you know, a, a variation of the default profile to get this done in a timely manner. Um, I don't think that's going to happen based on the discussions, uh, and I'll hit that in just a second. Um, there is a bit of movement on 6802, finally. We are moving to a working group ballot that's significant in that it is uh, now draft two. Um, draft 1.4 comments were completed. That was made back in July. Um, late June, rather, and the comments were completed in July. So we've gone from thousands of comments that take months and months to, to get through to a more manageable progress on the, on the group's effort. Um, following group, working group ballot would be SA ballot. So uh, that's the standard association ballot. It's the last step before becoming a natural standard. So because it has taken longer, they had to push out the project authorization request or the PAR, um, but that's gone through. That'll be May 2023. Uh, when they expect to um, be at SA ballot, and that one year later is how long they're authorized to go um, to complete that. It could complete faster, um, and that would be welcome because everyone's anxious for the industrial TSM profile to be ready um, and testing efforts to, to be based off of uh, at least a technically complete draft, which we are rapidly approaching. Um, there's several A2.1 AS amendments, um, including the uh, HUT standby effort, um, the current 2020 standard. While there's some mechanisms for multiple domains, there's no clear guidance on how one should do 
um, a hot standby from one grandmaster to fail over, you know, to a to a secondary hot standby, which is what that standard will address. That's also where they're intending to squeeze in the quick change to GPTP to say, oh, and you don't have to send an announce message, because um, that's the one of the drafts that's uh, farthest along here. Um, there are three others. Uh, there's a gang data model draft um, that's in flight. Um, a small but important update around inclusive terminology, since so many of our synchronous communications technologies and P2P make use of terms such as master slave. And you know, there's desires to find ways to move forward from that language, but not leave technical confusion behind us. Um, a big one why I pulled it out as a separate bu bullet here is the ASDS effort, which is allowing 10 days T1S principally uh, to support uh, TSN, uh, P PTP in specifically, um, because again, uh, really not many half duplex technologies have been in use over the past several years. And with 10 base T1S's popularity in the automotive space, at least half duplex Ethernet is back. The use of CSMA CD with PLCA uh, is certainly quite popular, but at the end of the day, it's still half duplex. So you have to be clear on where timestamping and how timestamping is reported. On that same note, we've had efforts in the past in ADA 3 to improve timestamping. ADA 3 CX is proceeding to SA ballot Draft 3.0 um, is what's going through that. It's it's a technically complete. It's it's a, a great improvement over the initial effort by DOT3 to define some improvements on the timestamping accuracy. And if implemented properly in a new FIS, then a system could get min and max delays for the current link of all the components in their system, whether they have Zowie connections or any other sort of intervening connections between the Mac and the FI, uh, as well as WIS layers, not that anyone does WIS, the WAN interface sublayer from 10 database, and, and so on and so forth. Anything that might add variable delay could be reported so that enhanced accuracy could be achieved, in fact, perhaps to a sub nanosecond level. Um, so that's encouraging. We'll see if adoption and validation can, can prove out you know, some of those implementations as they emerge. Um, in the dot three space, um, certainly uh, Jason was a little bit more involved here. Do you want to speak to CY, Jason? Yeah. Uh, although I would apologize in advance, it seems uh, CY is I I miss uh, described here as NG based T one. Uh, that is not the case. It is uh, twenty five gig based T one, as the following comment suggests. Um, but hello, everyone. Yeah, work with Bob here as the SB technical manager. So hoping to follow along some of these IEEE specs during the uh, Montreal visit was nice to see. Um, for CY itself, it was more of a continuing um, progression of looking at, uh, I would say scrambler schemes and some of the other discussions, um, more technical on the protocol side for 25 gig. And it, again, as, I guess was witnessed um, more of the focus is on one lane 25 gig for prior objectives did describe the 50 gig and 100 gig options but with that being only one pair or multiple pairs from the one 25 gig lane um, it's deemed not as necessary to specify as that could be wrapped up in a future spec or just defined as more pairs um, continuing to follow that, but in the grand scheme of things, there wasn't a whole lot of progression made, I think, in Montreal. For DA, the enhanced 10 base T1S multi drop segment, uh, there was a lot of discussion uh, with investigating it. Um, the data and power transmission options that have been brought forward, what channels to use to pair uh, or a single pair. What are the benefits? Um, but the, I would say, um, the kind of reorganizing of what are the main focuses and desires of the group was nice to see. Um, and it kind of brought forward, <clears throat> what do we want to transfer or how do we want to transfer the data and power and what are the implications of that? Um, so to look at that, they brought forth more channel options, um, whether you know um, it could meet the enhanced number of nodes that this DA is trying to propose, or it can meet some of the characterization of 
the noise environments that people were bringing forward in industrial space or um, automotive sense. So did, did they set down a number of notes? They're, they're still investigating that number. I think in, investigating, but it, it's at least double of what original T1S was looking at. So instead of up to at least, I think it's up to at least six, up to at least eight is up to at least 16 is the desire now, um, if not more. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's what I, yeah, yeah, it's going to be more interesting in terms of the potential use cases and applications is the hope, um, especially and if the data and power can be passed along in one in uh, environment. So, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take, take back, Jason, just to highlight That's fine. the fact that <laughs> we do have, uh, thank you though, uh, we do have a lot of activity with the channel community, the standards definitional community. Uh, you know, we work with George Zimmerman and others in that space quite a bit. Um, and, and there'll be more on this 10 based T1S topic in, in just a moment. So I do want to get to that. Um, I'll, I'll just quickly just mention, I, I made the list here of the relevant SPOE topics for power over data line or the single pair power over Ethernet as, as it's uh, being rebranded a bit. Um, that maintenance effort is continuing. Improvements for time sync in uh, single pair Ethernet, but point to point time sync um, is is an ongoing effort. And there's a early days effort also for what will effectively be 100 base T1L um, where, where that work continues. Yeah, a lot of the topics, sorry, Bob, uh, was yeah, brought yeah. over from T1S into T1L. So it was good to see uh, the applications of both of those um, discussions be used in both groups. So hopefully that uh, progress in either will help push forward both groups, which will be great. Yep, yep, absolutely. And, and that I do think is going to be important and progress rapidly. I will just again highlight the time sync for PTP. This is more in the phi layer of how it reports timestamps. That's different than the previously mentioned 802.1 ASDS that is truly you're trying to address how PTP is supposed to behave, for example, in the face of a collision where you know a timestamp frame is dropped and, and has to be resent and a new timestamp generated. Now, again, solvable problems, but we need to have one way we're solving the problem, not multiple different uh, slightly incompatible uh, solutions. Just a quick quick summary that this was a hybrid meeting up in Montreal. And moving forward, um, the last plenary that's expected to be hybrid will be, I didn't put this one down here, but it's expected to be in Bangkok, Thailand uh, in November. And the dot one meetings, at least moving forward, where most, much of this TSN uh, work is being done, is in person uh, in Albany, Baltimore, uh, and Helsinki. Um, there's no guarantee that there'll be uh, hybrid remote participation options. So the world of travel is returning to us to, to stay current uh, with these activities. We'll do what we can to update uh, the snippets, but again, questions are always something we're happy to take if we can answer um, uh, and provide more context. Um, on that 10 days T1S topic, um, some may be aware that in early June in Munich, there was an Automotive Ethernet Congress uh, show, and that had a showcase of 10 days T1S um, being demonstrated across eight plus nodes on 25 meters of, of cabling, um, showing the interoperability of, of uh, several devices. And we're looking to build on that activity with a plug fest that's aimed at September 19th, um, largely looking for those participants from Munich to be involved, although we are aware of several other parties who, um, if not in September, would be participating in plug tests with us in the future. Um, so certainly if there's any interest in that plug test, please reach out to contact us about participating in this rapidly approaching timeframe or being involved in a future plug test, be it late this year or early next year, as we will certainly have more 10 base T1S activities um, and for the moment, we're focusing on noise immunity, following the IEEE guidance on the alien uh, stress receiver test. Uh, Open Alliance goes a little bit further in their requirements, as well as some load testing, something a little bit more structured, um, but also under NDA. So once we report this out, um, the group will have some, um, will, will have the final say on anything that gets publicly released, if anything. But certainly encourage folks to reach out to be involved with the plug test activities or with our 10 base T1S testing service that we're also launching at this time, performing PMA and MAC testing. The CSMA CD testing is critical to the operation of 10 base T1S. PLCA enhances CSMA CD, but it does not replace it. So both must function properly. 
Um, so verifying that is what we'll be doing in the early stages and continuing to work with Open Alliance's TC14 group to help define PCS and PLCA testing um, as that group makes progress. <clears throat> Again, trying to keep this um, to the, just a half hour mark, I'm gonna touch lightly on, we continue to do 10-based T1L testing. Um, we work closely with the APL group. We have test software and test hardware, um, test fixtures that parties can use to test in-house or test with us. Uh, we work closely with the APL group members, PNO, OPC Foundation, ODBA, Fieldcon group to uh, define those tests. But we're also very interested in working with silicon vendors to provide full IEEE silicon conformance testing based on the 802.3 standard. Uh, APL testing naturally is focused on if I take this semiconductor that should be conformant and connect it to my product, connect it to this Mac, you know, provide power to it, use different connectors, does everything still work? Um, it's not verifying the underlying semiconductor itself, which is still an essential element of completing um, confidence building exercises here in this space. So we are working with some silicon vendors to engage with that. We had some effort for ANEG and PCS testing, but completion of, of by control and PCS and ANEG is still essential uh, for that effort, in my opinion. Um, Jason touched on some of this, but there, there are certainly interests beyond the low speeds. Um, we certainly have um, 100 base T1 testing ongoing, in fact, ongoing right now with vendors in our lab. Um, but we also have um, challenges where we need multiple tooling options. And fortunately, we just still expect to see a second uh, gigabit a T1, 1000 base T1 um, test tool come online by the end of this year. Um, that will help both give us confidence that we have multiple ways to perform the test, that the tools are working properly, and hopefully give us a little bit more capacity to clean up what is certainly a pressure in the industry to see this testing uh, uh, available. Um, we are continuing to work with the Ethernet Alliance to support their SPE interests. Have a little bit more on that uh, coming up. And again, we do have um, plans for plug tests uh, through the calendar year 22 here and into early 2023. As mentioned for T1S, we, we have this planned event. We are working with parties to still get NDAs executed and so we can actually pull this event off, but you know, time is tight, but there is interest in seeing this happen. And we also have um, um, a multi-gig SPE event that uh, the Open Alliance is working to organize um, that was tentatively towards the end of November um, that's likely being rescheduled at the moment. Uh, hopefully that will still happen. Um, but if that effort with the Open Alliance hits a, a, a roadblock, we'll certainly be happy to work with them to host an event in late this year or early next year for multi-gig as there's certainly growing demand there. Um, again, uh, there's more topics than just physical layer SPE testing. Um, and I do wanna hit on a, a few of these. Um, PTP and validation of PTP does go beyond just GPTP. So the ISPCS, the International IEEE Symposium on Precision Clock Synchronization for Measurement Control and Communication, it's a mouthful, um, will finally be back in person meeting in Austria, October 2nd through 7th. Um, registration for the early um, discounted registration is still possible um, as long as you do that by the 15th. Um, and there are briefings on the PlugFest activities. One is tomorrow um, at 1500 UTC and uh, the web link is here. Um, there will be another one at September uh, 1st. Um, highly encourage folks to participate in those briefing calls. There's, there's no registration requirement. Um, it is uh, certainly a requirement to be registered to be at the PlugFest. But if you have interest in testing telecom, uh, broadcast profiles, high accuracy, white rabbit-like uh, profiles, or GPTP or power profile, et cetera, um, these generally occur um, in the two and a half days of the PlugFest, and there's a conference, and there's a sync school for uh, PTP uh, basic training and such that occurs uh, at these conferences. So definitely a, a recommended opportunity, uh, especially if it's convenient to you. Um, there was mentioned in the past webinars of the P1952 effort and the request for a little bit more information. So I have a little bit more information here. Um, pointing you to the membership of the group. Um, it's an IEEE group, so anyone can join as an, uh, uh, in the activity and contribute, uh, review the drafts, um, propose uh, uh, solutions as the effort builds upon the Department of Homeland Security's res resilient PNT conformance framework. Um, the goal here is to provide, uh, obviously, increased assurance of GNSS receivers in user equipment. Um, 
And the challenge here and why we're involved is obviously timing has to come from somewhere. And if it's in a substation or in a telecom environment um, or a mobile vehicle, in many cases, it may come from a GNSS, typically GPS. Um, and having some assurance that devices are designed well, um, we, don't, we can't prevent GPS from um, being blocked by skyscrapers in a downtown section. We can't prevent um, some inadvertent or verdant uh, forms of jamming to occur, but we can define how the devices should behave in those conditions, how they might fail safe, if you will, um, and how they recover, how they perform as re resiliently as possible. So again, this effort is still fairly new. Drafts are expected in early 23, a full draft and ballot perhaps by mid-July, but in parallel to that, there's a conformity assessment effort run through ICAP that um, is getting underway. And folks with these interests should participate either in the standards group or the ICAP effort or both. Speaking of ICAP, 1588 efforts for ICAP continue. Um, that is the conformity assessment effort within IEEE. Uh, we have ordinary clocks, grandmaster capable, grandmaster only, slave only devices that can be tested uh, today. We've just wrapped up pilot testing for transparent clocks. We're still looking for the pool of boundary clocks to grow a bit. And the test plan itself is still open for comment and review, but that window is closing. So I encourage folks to get involved in this PTP power profile effort if you still have that interest, at least to provide comment on the test plan um, or to send your products through for testing or work with us to get our test software so you can do some pre-testing in-house if your preference is, is to get as ready as possible before you come in uh, to test with us. For time, I'm just gonna touch quickly on you know, we have had telecom interests. We participated in the ORAN Alliance uh, Spring Plug Fest. We are working with the ORAN Alliance to be part of their Fall Plug Fest. The planning for that literally is just getting underway, so very early uh, to say. But anyone looking at S plane activities, the ITU 8275.1 or .2, we certainly could have some interest there um, to to work with your felt yourselves or you know, with Calnex or or Dixia, others to to validate these technologies. And similarly with Ethernet Alliance, we continue to work with that organization with what is planned for October 10th of that week uh, for another high-speed uh, plug fest. We had one back in April. Uh, there's a pent up demand. So having another plug fest roughly six months later um, uh, is still very likely to happen. I don't expect that to change. Um, and mentioned earlier, I'll, I'll just uh, highlight it here again, that the SPE efforts within Ethernet Alliance continue to move forward there is some discussion of possibly having plug fests for SPE through EA. They may be more power over data line or SPOE related. Um, they may be T1L and SPOE um, combined. There might be T1S, but a, lo a lot of the effort seems to be focused on trying to provide validation and certification. So that group um, may uh, rise in that space and we'll certainly be working to support them. Um, I do want to mention at the at the end here, I look at that right on the 30 minute mark. Um, I do want to mention that in parallel to um, these testing efforts and standardization efforts that our lab engages with, we do support our researchers. And UNH has for some time been pursuing NSF projects in, in various forms. We, we have multiple submissions of late around um, 5G activities for NSF engines and, and other uh, 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 innovation uh, efforts that NSF is supporting. And this one, IUCRCs, are Industry University Collaborative Research Centers. So we have um, with Georgia uh, Tech and uh, uh, North Carolina State University um, um, established a, a planning effort. That's the first stage of the NSF support for uh, what will be a Center for Digital Factory Innovation. Um, think of it like Industry 4.0, um, think of it as a, another a center focused on um, um, AI and machine learning, uh, as well as uh, wireless sensors, be it Wi-Fi, 5G, or otherwise, uh, as well as TSN as part of the research components of what this group would be looking at. Um, other universities are expected to participate, and this is also supposed to engage and will have planned uh, participation from, from various parties. Um, I, I won't throw out names, but, but certainly um, various companies throughout the, the North America and potentially beyond looking to support their particular research interests collaboratively uh, within the constructs of this NSF IUCRC. 
So that planning meeting down in Georgia Tech is September 20th and 21st. I encourage folks to, to look at that Georgia Tech uh, webpage and, and potentially participate uh, if, if, you're, if you're interested in such. Um, so lots of different topics. Um, I'll certainly open up to questions. Uh, folks can grab the microphone, I believe, if you wish, um, or you can type out your question. Um, I'd love to hear um, feedback. Um, we, Jason or I can try to clarify on any topics we might have skimmed over too quickly or perhaps omitted. Again, um, hopefully by now, most folks know how to reach out to us, but uh, Jason and I um, have our contact information on screen. Um, Mike Godding uh, currently uh, at actually a flash memory summit. As the world gets back to travel, people are, are back to work. That's great to see. Um, but uh, Mike certainly can be responsive. Um, Michelle's out this month, but hopefully uh, we'll see her back and be able to uh, help coordinate further activities as we go into uh, into the fall. Um, if, if there's any topics or questions, uh, feel free to, to ask. Um, if you have an opinion or would just like to, to get a discussion going, you're also welcome to do that. I think anyone can un unmute at any time if you wish. I'll just go back to the 10 base T1S Plugfest mention. Um, and I'm curious, of, of those in attendance here, um, do the SPE topics of either 10 base T1S or 10 base T1L uh, hold an interest for you? I know from our past polls, we also had questions around the 6802 effort. And there's certainly more going on than just the, the draft. Um, there is an effort underway to try to start to define uh, conformity assessment um, for this standard. Um, that's just in the early stages as a group, much like the APL group, has just finalized some uh, um, legal documents to to exist. Um, I'll, I'll have more of an update on that. Um, probably, where would we be here? We'd probably be in October um, for, for such an update. Um, well, if, if we go for the first week of October as we normally would do, then I would be joining you from Austria, as I do intend to be um, at the Plugfest supporting that event, as IOL has uh, for 10 plus years now been supporting ISPS uh, Plugfests um, and also chairing their technical uh, papers effort with our um, computer science department uh, chair. Many different topics covered, a little bit um, scattered. I'm certainly happy to take the time to, to get into depth on any topic area. Um, if, uh, if you have a question, you can ask questions anonymously. Um, feel free to type that in if, if you'd rather take that approach. Um, but certainly, um, if you are here, I hope we touched on some of the interest topics for you, but I'd love to try to clarify anything further. Um, if you have a question, the floor is yours. Eric, you're always good for a question. Yeah, I, I was I was afraid you would call me in. <laughs> yeah. That's the benefit of, of being vocal. But yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> topics on, on this on this um, month's update. So just curious where your interest might be. Yeah, no, I mean as a as a um, tool provider for test and validation, we're obviously looking close at what um, interoperability topics would be coming. And I think the hot topics are multi-gig and 10-base T1S, but the interest I think should be more on the OEM side. And uh, yeah. I... Oh, I 100% agree. And so there are OEMs pushing us for both of these activities. 
um, you know, certainly Kirsten and Natalie aren't shy about, you know, having their um, uh, activities uh, be, be all that secret. Um, because, you know, their leadership roles in the Open Alliance and elsewhere um, make that apparent. Um, but obviously the devil's in the details, right? We do, um, at the time of the beginning of our T1S effort for the Plugfest here, we had four semiconductor vendors who were very keenly interested in participating. You know, the, the things we still need to work through is legal departments to make sure that uh, NDAs can get executed because we can't have an event that isn't covered by an NDA um, for obvious reasons. We're, we're not looking to be a, um, an event that is is light on, on content. And as a result, we need to make sure that any findings that do occur in such an event are protected. So that that's the only thing threatening our September activity at the moment if we lose critical mass um, for NDA signatories. But I remain optimistic at the moment for that. Um, and similarly for the multi-gig activity, um, I, I know there was some scheduling challenges for that activity, but definitely a strong interest from the Open Alliance to see that activity come together. Um, so, you know, plug tests aren't the end all be all for sure, but we've seen problems and over the pandemic, we've seen problems with some of the technologies where all the focus has been is on conformance testing. Um, there is a huge benefit in having plug tests that, you know, whatever stage you're at, whether you have a product that you think is, is final and ready to go, or you're at an early prototype stage. With that NDA protection, you should be able to participate in a plug fest, get a sense of how well you're performing, even if you're only focusing on certain aspects of your implementation and, and move forward with more confidence while the industry at large, the, the organizations involved learn how complete is our testing? You know, If we're finding interoperability issues, but some devices um, appeared to be fully conformant per conformance testing, obviously we have gaps. What's the cause of that gap? Testing in, incomplete, test plans inaccurate, test tools that have faults, or standards that have problems. It, it is essential uh, ingredients here. So I'm glad to see the, the plug tests coming back in importance. Um, they're certainly not um, all that is needed, but it, it is an important part. And you know, certainly I would agree that um, tool vendors are essential. We can write a test plan, but if we don't have a tool to help perform the test plan or verify the test tools, obviously is meaningless. So won't put you on the spot further, Eric, but I appreciate the comment because it is it is an important area that we're seeing at the moment for both Tim, these T1S uh, and multi-gig. Agree. Yeah. Um, and we did mention, I think at some point, MaxSec when you were touching the security items a few months ago, I don't know if this remains to yeah. be something of interest it, in the industry. Hugely. Hugely, um, major attention in the Automotive Ethernet Congress um, back in June. Um, you're right, I, I only mentioned it in one of our past meetings when we also, I think, talked about some of the PTP security mechanisms. There's an authentication TLB um, that 1588 uh, 2019 defined. That will be part of the test coming up at ISPCS for those implementing that feature. But that's only integrity and auth authentication. It, it's not um, encryption of the link like MaxSec offers. You know, so the content beyond PTP um, certainly uh, can and uh, may in many cases need to be secured. So absolutely MaxSec is of, of high interest from what I've seen. And then you get into the implications of, well, if you're running TSN through MaxSec, uh, et cetera. Um, if from, you know, selfishly from the UNHIOL perspective, our MaxSec services unfortunately are a little bit out of date, focusing on some older versions of MaxSec. But as we have seen an uptick in MaxSec requests, uh, that is an effort that I'm, I'm hopeful um, we'll be able to dust off and offer more up-to-date uh, services there. But certainly there's interest, there's certainly need, and MaxSec interoperability alone could certainly be valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that could really become something major, especially when the, the MKA topics um, come in and um, you're looking at optimization of the uh, link establishment of securing the securing the channel, um, and yeah, I mean, those three are the topics that I'd say we're looking intensely into. And yeah, I would have liked that some other people would be asking questions and taking in some <laughs> some insights here. <laughs> And, and, you know, not, not to uh, to pick on you too much here, I'm sorry, but uh, is there a, um, 
Um, oh, I don't have any awareness of the Open Alliance addressing MacSec. Now, that may simply be because I can't be everywhere in the Open Alliance. Um, mm -hmm. And while I certainly don't want to breach NDAs of, of what groups are doing internally, much of what the Open Alliance does when they complete it is posted publicly. Um, mm -hmm. So if, if I'm mistaken there, uh, feel free to correct me. Um, I, in fact, I, I'd agree with you. So I would say that uh, Maxic is not a topic that I have seen in any TC at the Open Alliance at the moment, but probably it's also not the place or I'm not too sure. Um, what I know is because we're involved in it is um, the introduction of uh, AutoSAR specifications for, for Maxic so that AutoSAR Classic and yeah. AutoSAR Adaptive ECUs can uh, understand how to map that um, kind of information. And um, well, it's a good question. I, I have not seen, uh, yeah, any activity there on standardizing those kind of things for, from that perspective, yeah. at least only the AutoSAR part. But I, and, I think and, it and might also, not be, yeah. yeah. Well, the, I, the question. I what I, where I would expect that to be, <laughs> honestly, but it, it, that's more of an implementation, you know, uh, enablement, I, I would characterize yeah there has to be some compatibility obviously um but unless i'm mistaken which i may very well be um there there isn't as much focus on the conformance validation as say open um, performs yeah in, in fact the, the what you mentioned before uh, with respect to this test specifications and so on um yeah good question where are they and who are who's gonna take responsibility over them what what premium what um Standardization body. Um, myself, I don't know right now. Maybe there is something out there, but I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't say it myself right now. Yeah, our our enterprise bridging uh, service group has performed MaxSec testing for ten plus years, but that that's part of the problem. The early interest waned, so some of the updates to the test plans uh, therefore fell by the wayside. So th there likely would need to be some update. Um, and you know, if, if Rambus or others are interested in seeing such updates, we certainly could work with, with various uh, industry interested parties to, to try to do those test plan updates. It's then the question of, to be maximally effective, you know, who else can we engage with? Is it AutoSAR? Is it open? Because um, certainly uh, I'm not so um, 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 uh, egocentric to say that everything is, is done at UNHI well. It, it certainly isn't, but if we can help, happy to. Uh, this is what these conversations are meant to be so that we can try to connect missing pieces and, and also help gather up needs um, where we can. The audience is small, but it, that also makes it uh, a little bit more, I, I hope, engaging. Um, so certainly, whether, whether it's the folks on the call here or if folks are reviewing this uh, offline uh, as the recording, we, if you've gotten this far, congratulations. But you know, certainly, feel free to reach out to us with, with what your needs might be. We'd love to hear from, from folks. Um, so I'm not sure if we have a lot of questions today. Um, I'm happy to chat, Eric, but uh, I, we can also chat directly um, as, as the time allows. But uh, we're here now. Uh, are there any other questions or, or comments from others? Um, happy, to, happy to get into them. If not, um, the only other, I because I, I know the past poll mentioned in several places um, the IEEE 1588 validation. I'll just again stress parties can send devices to us today for the power profiles. Um, while our group can test the default profile, we can test um, uh, you know, various other forms, IPv6 encapsulation, verify transparent clock, uh, hardware timestamping and such. Um, our main focus in this effort is for the certification uh, within the IEEE for the IEC 61859-3 standard um, or the C37238 standard. You don't have to do C37.238. That's an add-on to the 61859-3 whether you're an ordinary clock, transparent clock, or boundary clock, if you have an interest in getting registered for the IEEE, um, the utilities and others may uh, grow in their demand or, or at least interested in seeing that validation. We welcome that uh, conversation. Um, I also will put up um, just the mention here, uh, and 
I know there's a million different ways that uh, these problems can be skinned, but a large part of the 6802 effort and the conformity assessment for this is going to be around the Yang uh, data models um, and their validation um, as so much of the industrial uh, TSN effort is about a centrally managed network where all the bridges and end stations can be interrogated, discovered, configured, et cetera. And that's all done by a common management mechanism. Um, so much of the validation here will be of that management. Um, so certainly as, and if folks are interested, I uh, encourage you to reach out with how exactly and, and by what process, you know, these, these specifications will be developed to help people can get early testing. And again, in the industrial TSN space, there may very well be a benefit in having a plug fest around industrial TSN, just as much as there might be a value in an automotive MACSEC TSN test scenario, since putting all these pieces together can often start to expose problems. Um, and maybe that's best done in AutoSAR context. That, that's uh, certainly not the first time AutoSAR has come up uh, in the past few months, uh, as far as being uh, of growing importance for, for validating some of these efforts, even if it's just from the part, the point of including them in the AutoSAR framework that still requires some level of validation and integration. Okay, well, I, I won't push us to the to the hour, um, just, uh, just to hear me keep on talking because I, I can do that pretty easily, but I don't wanna um, abuse your time. Um, please feel free to reach out if there's something specific we can answer that, that we didn't touch on here. Also, please feel free at the end of this webinar, there'll be a small survey. Uh, please take a moment to let us know um, what you might be interested in hearing next. My intention is to still have these as follow-ups to the IEEE um, 802 interims and plenaries, roughly one month after each time they occur. Obviously, some months will have more news than others, um, and you know we'll we'll certainly adjust uh, accordingly. Um, also, optimistic that our groups covered in these updates will grow. Currently, we're only addressing this. Um, uh, TSN and SPE space, but uh, I, I snuck in one on you and, and no one no one complained. Oops, sorry, my mouse is not behaving right. Uh, our high-speed networking activities, um, they've been ongoing for, for many years now um, and certainly don't exactly fit the definition of, of single-pair Ethernet. Um, so we can certainly talk on other areas of UNH IWL involvement, but I, I very much welcome this to be a discussion of interests as it pertains principally to these emerging technologies of, of TSN, 10 base T1S, uh, and other uh, physical layers as they interact with, with TSN and emerging uh, interesting use cases um, that maybe don't fit the definition of TSN, but certainly 10 base T1S uh, enables um, solutions that would otherwise have been done by non Ethernet technologies. So, with that, um, I, think, I think we're good. Um, I appreciate your time today. I hope uh, you found some of this to be instructful. Um, and as I said at the end, please do um, take a moment to, to wrap up with your comments and, and questions. I believe that will appear automatically if I'm not mistaken, Mara. That is correct. Perfect, perfect. Well, again, thank you all for your time. Um, if you're available to join us in October, uh, I hope to update you with Upgoing, ongoing PlugFest planning needs. Uh, the, the ISPCS event will be ongoing at that time um, and or the uh, EA event of the week after. Um, but again, there, there's, there's plenty of areas that I'd be happy to, to try to elaborate more on um, uh, as, as your interests and questions warrant. So I'll, I'll, I'll end here and wish you all a good day. Take care.